are y'all? Happy Friday. Welcome back. Concepts and training. Diving into the concept of program hopping, what program hopping is and why it's probably hindering your gains. So program hopping, to be honest, something I think probably started a little bit more coming from the CrossFit realm. We see this happen a lot. Program hopping is basically what you see this tendency and coaches know it as these athletes and these people that will bounce from program to program to program. They never stay on something set. Right? They're always looking for the next best thing. They're always jumping from coach to coach, you know, from gym to gym. They're hopping on one program to the next and it changes every three to four weeks. They never stick with something consistent. Right? Now, here's the thing that we actually look at. If you're on a good program, right, there's gonna be a couple main things that are considered. One, right, we're gonna consider training load on a daily basis, training load and training volumes. So how much weight you're lifting and how many reps, how many sets you're doing, right? That's considered in a daily volume. That daily volume is then calculated into a weekly volume. So a weekly intensity, a weekly volume of how much load you're lifting throughout the week, how much load you're lifting throughout um, your daily sessions adds up. Then it gets considered into the cycle volume. So if all of a sudden we look at your weekly volume, and let's just say you're on a two-week cycle, let's say you're on a four-week cycle, those things add up. Those are all considerations, right? That cycle volume, or what we consider a mesocycle volume, then gets considered into a macro cycle volume. So when we look at the long-term picture, if you, pro if you jump from program to program, right, if you're program hopping, one of the things you start messing with is you start messing with your daily loads. You start messing with your weekly loads. You start messing with your monthly and macro cycle loads, right? So you're never on a set macro cycle. Training and programs, right? There's a reason it's called a program. That program is set to develop over a set period of time, right? Olympic athletes are tend to be on what's called a quad. So their macro cycle is four years long. And those mesocycles break down into smaller chunks and we break those things down. So if our end goal, if we know an end date and an end goal, well, there's our macro cycle, right? Uh, for a lot of the weightlifters that I run, we are on a year long macro cycle. Those macro cycles then have on the inside dates that are set. Those are competition dates. Those are uh, set peaking dates. Those are days that we have and time periods we have that we're working on specific adaptations. So when we look at training programs as a whole, if you're jumping from program to program, you start to mess with the adaptations you get, you start to mess with the skills that you develop, you start to mess with the loads that you use and utilize and the volumes that you utilize. So all of a sudden what we start to see is that instead of making these nice adaptations over time and actually making a positive impact over time, you start to see these really rapid jumps and these dips and these jumps and these might end up just being flatlined and never actually making progress, right? Like I said, I, this is one of those things that kind of seems like it came from the CrossFit realm because CrossFit's mentality of unknown and unknowable and kind of this randomized, like, be prepared for anything, while good in theory, when we actually look at the actual end up macro cycle or we actually end up looking long term, what are the long term positive results that we're looking for? Those are things that we can plan for. Those are things that we can go after long term. So. If you're sitting there and you're jumping from program to program, maybe you follow a program for a month and then you jump to another program and then you jump to another program, right? What you're doing is you're basically resetting your body and you're basically never making the positive adaptation in the direction you wanna go, right? This goes for skill work, this goes for strength work, this goes for aerobic or anaerobic work, so your cardiovascular system um, and just kind of your conditioning. Um, this goes, like I said, skill, strength, conditioning. Um, we really want to look at it even psychologically or like body fat and body composition, building muscle mass, right? So when we start looking at those things, we have to understand that those are all variables that get thrown into a program. They're not necessarily thrown into, but are considered. So if you're program hopping and you're missing out on gains, look at the fact that you're not being consistent, right? Coaches know this, it drives coaches nuts. You now when I have people that change programs all the time, the, the all the time and you're hopping for the next best thing, you're not gonna find the next best thing. You're just gonna find a slower progression or progression. You're gonna find a slower progression to the goal you wanna get to. So just some thoughts on program hopping, that's what it is, why you probably shouldn't do it. 
Um, and it's one of those concepts that I think is kind of lost on certain individuals, especially if you're new to training, you follow tons of social media, influencers, whatever, that are always pushing these different programs. Understand that programs take into consideration all those different variables. So um, just some thoughts on program hopping. One of those concepts I think constantly needs to be addressed, especially if you're new to training, if you're new to having actual like design training and on a training program that's set. And if you're one of those people that kind of hops around and bounces from program to program, hopefully you can find some value in that and understanding that program hopping is probably not in your best interest, especially long term.